In India, we hire a plumber or an electrician through an app, but we are still hiring makeup artists or photographers through WhatsApp status or Facebook groups. In this week's episode of our podcast, when we met, we talk about what India's gig economy boom really means for creative professionals and how big this boom is, or is it just a delusional bubble? My name is Pawan Rochwani, and this show is produced by Platform for Artists and is supported by all our community members. Before I get into this topic, here is a small announcement. On 20th of June 2020, we are hosting a webinar on growth hacks for artists, where we are sharing some jugars that we usually share in our three-hour masterclass to the cohort. But this is a quick one-hour webinar on the topic. You can register for this on Book My Show or Townscript or the PFA website. I will also attach the link in this episode description. So, I'll see you there maybe. Now let's get into the freelance culture of India part one. Before I start recording any episode of this show, I always try to read as much relevant and credible material I can, or watch as much relevant and credible material I can. But unfortunately, the whole of internet is bombarded with two reports on this topic of gig economy in India or freelance culture of India. PayPal did a survey with 1,000 freelancers from United States in 2017. Here is the method they used. First point. Out of the 1,000 people, some are already freelancers, and some might become freelancers in the next six months. They have not defined the exact number of people who fall into which category, but yeah, that's what they have just said. Second point: This report is one of the 22 reflecting reports on the topic from around the world. We don't know what these other 21 reports are, and what factors they have considered while making this report, and how much dependency and assumptions have gone into when they claimed freelancers on an average make thirty thousand dollars a year. We don't even know if this term freelancer includes data scientists or designers or content writers or legal consultants. We don't know that. Another report was by the giant corporation EY. They have done an internet survey with 1,008 freelancers and 1,000 employees from corporations who have more than 100 million dollars turnover. Basically, this can be equivalent to sending a Google form on your family WhatsApp group and writing a message: "Hey everyone, please fill this up for my college report." This survey was done in 2016, and the report was released in 2017. Again. This was done in the US and there has been no survey done till now in India. I found one survey which is done in India but the data was gathered by 800 HR professionals in that case to understand if they would hire freelancers or not. And 81% of them said yes they would prefer to do it because why not we don't have to give insurance or sick leaves or provident fund benefits to these freelancers. That's it. That's all we know about freelancers and the data about freelancers in India. We don't know what freelancers in India think or were doing in 2016 or 17, 18, or God knows how the situation is for them during COVID-19 crisis. The worst part is that using these two reports, media houses like Your Story in India have written articles like "What Makes the Gig Economy Hottest Trend in India." I'm not sure how different this article is compared to any medium blog by an aspiring writer, but the joke was at the end. At the end of the article, they also write disclaimer: the views and opinions expressed in this article are those of the author and do not necessarily reflect the views of your story media. I'm like, dude, this is on your website. Some editor or someone from your team approved this, right? And I just want to ask this company. How shallow can you get than this? Because people quit their jobs based on news or what they see on the internet, and they make major life decision considering these articles. This just reminds me of the year 2012 when everyone around me kept saying engineering में बहुत scope है, while we knew this will lead to a bottleneck scenario till I graduate in 2016. So today when I'm recording something about the freelance culture of India I want to be as honest as possible with you about this as a freelancer and also as a person who has worked with multiple freelancers in the past 3 years 
because finding authentic information is impossible these days and the whole content internet is just a clickbait game but more importantly to the frequent 2000 listeners of this podcast i do not take you all for granted so that is why i had a conversation with someone who runs a marketplace to hire creative professionals if you are a freelance creator in india you must have heard about indifolio network and how you can get freelance gigs through their website i spoke to kavan who is the co-founder and ceo of indifolio network and you will hear my conversation with him from here onwards over a zoom call thank you so much kavan for doing this uh, conversation i am for two reasons actually one for being such a sport because i'm not sure uh, if somebody would call me for the very first time on a tuesday and then ask me to record mm-hmm. my beliefs and ideas about a topic on thursday and then publish it to the world on a friday how open i would be to that idea so thank you so much for uh, doing this secondly also because you know i have uh, long wanted to i mean pf i wanted to collaborate with indi follow in some other other way i think this should be a good start for that collaboration for both the communities so thank you so much for doing this thanks a lot pavan for having me and uh, yeah kudos to you for accommodating for the late evenings and early mornings i think that really helped us get this out as quickly as possible it's a really noble thing you guys are doing and i really hope your conversations and our conversations help the community at large and yeah look forward to more collaborations and seeing what communities creative communities in india can do together definitely and i think that's why uh, i also wanted to do this conversation i'm going to jump directly uh, into some questions that i wanted to ask and know your thoughts about sure very firstly how would you describe the freelance culture in india um so briefly the freelance culture in india is shaping up quite well uh when you talk about the environment first uh it's a great place it's a great time to freelance right now uh mindsets are changing the startup boom is being a catalyst uh even aspects like uh, co-working spaces which you know give you the, that uh liberty to work by yourself in a professional environment is all coming up so i think it's the right time right now and even if you just look at the number of freelancers worldwide india always ranks second and it's been a while since we've been ranking second we're only behind usa and uh, i predict that in the years to come we'll be even crossing that market so yeah i think if you are a freelancer it's the right time to freelance and if you're thinking of freelancing jump at it uh now that's uh, the environment now if i were to talk quickly even about um, the people uh that's where i think um, you know there are some challenges we've got a, a big diversity of freelancers we've got these professional high quality freelancers who've been working with brands all over the world and we've also got uh, uh, a lot of freelancers who are chasing money and not value and uh, you know kind of that starts a price war and a lot of i've i've heard a lot of issues crop up because of that and uh, you know i think upskilling and uh, being more professional with your with your clients and with your service is what i think is slightly lacking and it's not just the freelancers uh, and the supply side but even the demand side uh, as a whole a lot i see a lot of gaps in clients as well and uh, i think both demand and supply side now need to focus on um, uh, doing i mean ad- getting adjusted to remote working better hmm. and you were saying that uh, india is second in the number of freelancers but what do you think is the difference in the culture and the environment of freelance in us and india mm-hmm. well uh, so us is a mature market right and um, it's been it's been doing what they're doing since a while so it's just you know it's more organized and um, uh, i think usually even uh, folks there their professional etiquette is brilliant i think that's something we all can learn from but i wouldn't say it's very different you know people still negotiate people still have strict deadlines but instead of saying ki 
अरे चेंजेस दे दो और बी फास्ट देल देल कम टू द पेज सेइंग आई रिस्पेक्ट वेयर यू आर कमिंग फ्रॉम एंड आई अप्रिशिएट योर इनपुट बट फ्रॉम माय पर्सपेक्टिव दिस इज व्हाट आई वुड रेकमेंड सो आई थिंक दैट्स द रियल डिफरेंस द एटिकेट uh and um yeah i think the prices etc are also a little different right because uh, it's the standard of living but mm-hmm. m- more or less i think you know i think uh, india as indians i think are a great global workforce and uh, soon we will be we will blend very well with all of these foreign markets so i don't think so it's extremely uh, different Mm-hmm. so i think i also agree to a certain extent um, on this and i think the past few years because of all the uh, new startups coming in and even also a lot of uh, state governments and central government helping uh, startups and new accelerator programs coming in incubators coming in and you know that has uh, sort of helped uh, more freelance culture being developed in the country but when you're talking about the whole gig economy of india and we, i mean i'm constantly hearing that the gig economy in india is going to boom and it's booming and all this but how much do you think it comprises of the creative gigs like let's say uh, because in gig economy also um, the technical side let's say software developers app developers or even mm-hmm. delivery and logistical uh, jobs i would say are considered in gig economy so how much do you mm-hmm. think uh, the creative gigs a uh, comprise of this whole term of gig economy mm-hmm. well um so we run a creator focused and a creative professional focused uh, marketplace so all we have is creative folks um now when i give you an overall perspective i'm afraid i don't have access to accurate numbers but i'll just share what i believe it could be so mm-hmm. if you go to most of these prominent marketplaces um i think design and it are always featured uh with respect to uh you know the uh, i'm sorry i i i mean to say that uh, the demand and supply are always uh, the it and design are always uh, promoted by these guys mm-hmm. they are always you know pushing those things out so definitely creative is uh, in the top 2 uh, i mm-hmm. think right after it uh creative gigs will compromise for the second highest kind of gigs available on uh, the global marketplace mhm so but i mean in terms of the indian context let's say uh mm-hmm. fiverr.com or freelancer.com or upwork do mm-hmm. i mean i they were not ideally made and designed for the indian market i mean it it was just like they created it in us or uk or somewhere abroad and then they launched it in india too so mm-hmm. how deeply rooted are these global marketplaces for india because like yesterday i was trying to just google hire a marathi content writer or let's say hire a tamil voice over artist i couldn't find that on the global marketplaces especially fiverr and the big ones so how efficient yeah. and you know useful are these marketplaces when it comes to our uh, you know the indian context of freelance needs mm-hmm. um okay so interesting question uh, so when we look at uh, you know these marketplaces and uh, very often you know a lot of people who are even probably hearing this uh, who are probably even freelancing full time they may or may not be on these fivers or freelancers as well and uh, the reason behind that is uh, i've been doing a lot of reading over the last couple of uh, months and uh, uh, most of these marketplaces mention that um, about 70 to 80% of their supply comes from people who are not in metro cities so hence probably it's quite common for us to you know enter a room and be like okay uh, you know indians are the second highest uh, you know pool when it comes to the global freelance supply but nobody in the room really is on any of these platforms if you are in a metro city of course so that's why you know there is a deep gap there and what tends to happen is that uh, this essentially comes to my previous first point i was trying to make is uh, this kind of a talent pool is more money driven and uh, the de- the demand side which is the 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 clients globally 
are mm-hmm. working with indians right now uh, for a for a cost advantage not necessarily a quality advantage it's mm-hmm. shifting uh, and i've seen that shift which is encouraging but still today i would say that that's the that's the reality now because of that uh, what ends up happening is that uh, the focus like you know someone like a marathi writer mm-hmm. um if he's looking out to be on these platforms he will know that there is going to be less demand mm-hmm. you know because uh, these guys are not focusing demand that way now mm-hmm. if you are a marathi writer right now trust me uh, write to any company you feel would need your services you would be surprised at how uh, welcoming they will be to your cold reach outs because um, uh, india is an extremely vast economy and it's so diverse um, now is when people are getting online now is when a lot of companies are looking to you know localize things and mm-hmm. by localization i mean you know thinking of marathi gujarati campaigns from scratch a lot of uh, things right now in the whole vernacular space is just mere translation and we could argue that that may not necessarily be a creative service mm-hmm. uh, and uh, when you look at translation services they are available but um, you know if you are a copywriter or a creative writer or a poet in tamil marathi gujarati you mm-hmm. don't just translate right you talk to your audience the way they would like to hear and mm-hmm. i've seen a lot of e-commerce startups a lot of companies there actually uh, who started to invest in it right now but the real truth here is that um, most startups like you and me will mm-hmm. first look at uh, a platform like english uh, mm-hmm. because you know the kind of audiences we are chasing first will be most receptive to that because the moment yeah. we pick any particular language we are cutting off like 70 80% of uh, the market who will just not understand and what i've seen is as companies grow they start looking at uh, various other languages as well that's mm-hmm. why i think it's a combination of uh, what the demand exists globally what uh, how the supply reacts to that demand and because of which you know it's extremely difficult for you to find that though i must mm-hmm. say that um, it's one of the focus areas for us as well the deeper we grow uh, in the indian market uh, the more focus we'll be able to give to things like vernacular and mm-hmm. uh, yeah we hope to kind of tap into and help these artists connect with demand and vice versa uh, in the upcoming years for sure yeah and i think this was a similar conversation i was having with a friend as well and i just casually asked her where do you get your freelance gigs from and we also put up this as a question on our uh, ig stories and other social media platforms that where do you get your um, usual freelance gigs from a lot of people answered instagram page facebook page or facebook group or whatsapp or word of mouth and some of the people also answered indie folio so i'm happy that awesome. when they listen to this <laughs> podcast uh, and this conversation they'll be proud about that but i hope i want to understand from you how credible are these uh, you know social media platforms as getting gigs for freelancers and also how authentic and credible can this be uh, to hire talent Hmm. Mm, well, it's a complex question. So, see, on the internet, like you know, the usual joke is you can be a dog on the internet, nobody will know. Hmm. So, attribution has always been a challenge. So, credibility wherever you are, social network or any other platform, is a challenge. But uh, I must say that uh, the way the world is moving, social is a very important part of everything you do today. Social hmm. marketing to even social hiring. is becoming so so common you know uh, mm. and um, uh, honestly speaking a lot of these social platforms like an instagram add credibility to you saying okay you are a real person and this is what you feel so credibility wise i think it's a good resource for sure but what it lacks is it la- it lacks a good customer experience right mm-hmm. if you are a creator out there if you were to tap into all available gigs right now you can't do that on these platforms because they are not designed like that similarly mm-hmm. if you were the, at the demand side and if you wanted to tap into available quality talent you it is going to be difficult for you it's usually referrals uh, or other people sharing other things and uh, you know that's how you kind of uh, understand so mm-hmm. the right uh, way for us here is i think um, and this is also something we've done before is integration if you're mm-hmm. in an indie folio can you back up your credibility with an instagram link simultaneously if you're on an ig 
can you use an indie folio portfolio link on your uh, bio to talk mm-hmm. more about your uh, you know work and maybe yeah. any of these platforms can make it very easy for you for clients to get in touch with you and have more information so it's going yeah. to be a combination of both but i must definitely tell you that the future is going to be social and um, uh, yeah i think uh, the, the new way of working also has to do a lot with these various other uh, you know platforms and communities mm-hmm. and networks more than just a, a, a repository where you just see like a, a, you know a listicle of multi, or other you just see items of people who are service providers and then there is demand and then you just connect like how a just dial used to do in its initial times that mm-hmm. will change it's going to become more real more people driven and it's going to be a network which is going to work yeah uh i think that's that's a great answer it it also clears some thoughts in my head uh lastly i want to ask you which is something relevant to the current uh, crisis that we are in what do you think how has the covid 19 situation you know brought a change in the freelance culture or in the whole freelance system in india well uh, i mean i think the the whole corona virus pandemic is quite unfortunate and it's affected everybody at various levels uh you know we've been hearing of layoffs companies are you know investing less into marketing efforts or product efforts both of where you need creative professionals so overall i think from a demand perspective i think uh, you know creative professionals need to move out of their comfort zone upskill themselves uh change things uh in their workflow try things they've never tried before uh, to kind of make the most of the situation but uh, from an overall perspective i think what this thing has done which is almost like a blessing in disguise it, it has forced companies individuals to start working remotely you know mm-hmm. we've always had a block saying yeah. yaar you know in in person is always better and sath mein sath mein kaam karenge to it will be more mm-hmm. efficient and i think that's gone you know like we've realized where we've reached you know i think for me also personally we were able to uh, we were on cloud platform since day one at indie for a network the mm-hmm. day we decided to work from home it didn't change anything the mm-hmm. only thing which we miss is that you know the whole thing of working with people and seeing everybody's faces in person every day and having a chit chat is a little less of but efficiency mm-hmm. productivity has increased stress is less so what has happened is people are like i think brands from a company like um, un mind which is a small startup to you know big companies uh, from reliance to a tata these mncs mm-hmm. have also now started accepting that okay you know what i'll start looking at remote talent as well in the mm-hmm. last couple of weeks you know so many companies have come to us saying hey kavan i don't mind working with anybody from india it's a full time remote opportunity you never have to come to office but you're going to get the ctc as much as a full time resource which is great yeah. and i think uh, we are going to move towards that uh, very very quickly and the pandemic has forced people uh, and, exp- and has been a catalyst in this entire you know uh, 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 shaping up of the freelance culture in india so yeah that was i think a definitely a good thing yeah i think i also see like a silver lining uh, <laughs> to these dark clouds uh but you said upskilling what do you think mm-hmm. um, some other things or also what in upskilling can be mm-hmm. can the freelancers adapt today to be you know more gig ready and just be ready when whenever this lockdown or this situation you know just gets over and things are back to normal so how ideally they should use this time right now to be gig ready in the future Sure. So, I, in fact, uh, that's quite a broad question, and I'm sure we both can talk about that for hours. But if I were to keep it extremely brief for the sake of this podcast, number one, I think um, get more accustomed to business. You know, uh, don't be like, "Hey, I don't care." You know, I don't like numbers. Mm-hmm. I get that. Even I don't like numbers personally, but it's important for you to have a basic idea of where you're headed. calculate mm-hmm. how how can you do uh, you know better profitability understand how you can price more uh, learn business development how can you pitch how can you get somebody's email id how can you use various tools today like an hubspot being my favorite uh, mm-hmm. on doing business development for yourself how, learn how to make a website uh, yeah. be very very extremely active on platforms from an instagram to an indie folio to 
any of these existing trillions of you know portfolio platforms out there be mm-hmm. active on it uh, uh, be an influencer at your, uh, for yourself you know be a brand ambassador for yourself build your personal reputation and uh, i think communication skills yaar yeah, like so uh, getting your idea across convincing people with your words is so important for pe- for creative professionals we are a service economy and i don't see that happening a lot it's a lot of people are like no that's not my cup of tea i'll put my head down and work which which mm-hmm. is okay but during this time during a pandemic when you want to really really uh, you know increase your business make more money you have to go out of your comfort zone and tap into everything i just mentioned so mm-hmm. yeah these are all the areas in where you know you could definitely uh, you know uh, uh, learn something improve something and uh, there are also smaller po- i mean uh, more specific points like increasing your um skill sets were you somebody in the events space were you somebody in the extremely offline heavy space well you know for the next couple of months or uh, maybe even a year you will be seeing a uh, less of traction uh, coming yeah. to- towards your way so hey learn something how can you create the same thing online we have ar and vr today instagram has spark vr which makes it so easy for you to mm-hmm. actually create digital experiences and there are so many tools out there which make it super simple for you to upskill yourself as well you know i talk about a creative advantage which i think all people have the advantage which we guys have is that we don't uh, we have a amazing amount of free content available to learn mm-hmm. we have lots of softwares with free trials out there and you know spending less than 20 30 hours will kick start us in this whole new domain once you yeah. learn the uh, you know tricks and uh, the softwares you just need to have ideas take mm-hmm. an idea make a brief create something yourself put it in your portfolio ask around you're done you know you're already started you have your diploma or your degree by yourself and now you're just in the industry getting exposure i think that's an advantage uh, we have which very very few people today can say they also do you know imagine you are a doctor imagine you were a lawyer imagine you were in accounting it's impossible for you to do yeah. what i just told you the way we can shift from one field to the other field is extremely easy and i think it's the right time for creative people to take advantage of that yeah i think uh, that's a wonderful answer and what you said about uh, communication i think i read a tweet uh, just yesterday where it said writing has become a more important skill than coding today and the way you you know just write your caption or copy or or you know just about yourself on your website True. is is really important today and how you market yourself and how you and your services uh thank you so much kevin for doing this conversation uh i'm i'm pretty sure a lot of people will have many takeaways from this small conversation as well uh i i am not sure how else i can thank you but anything else that you want to add uh something that we might have missed out on oh uh, well uh, firstly thank you pavan and it was a pleasure to be a part of this uh some very interesting questions and very relevant questions which was quite exciting for me to hear and uh, i think you guys are doing a great job of building an artist community in the country so yeah you know keep at it and uh, i think like we were discussing before the more the people are uh, doing things like this the better it is for the community you have more options you have more content and uh, at, the, at the end of the day initiatives like this help the indian creative professional and i think that's the aim we're all chasing to reach so yeah thanks a lot uh, once again and nothing really else from my end and yeah hope hope to collaborate with you soon uh, very very quickly thank you so much kavan thank you i'll be in touch with you The reason why we are doing this in two parts is because I am going to try and reach out to these people who have done these reports on gig economy in the past few years. I will try and get a comment from them about how do they think the economy will change because of this COVID nineteen situation. Uh, I am not sure if they'll come on the podcast, but at least I can try and email them about that. Because I feel freelancers are the people who are most affected right now. uh and in fact in us freelancers cannot even apply for unemployment benefits and probably this is the whole reason why uber was always in trouble with their drivers the drivers wanted to be considered as a full time employee or at least something like an intermediate but uh the shit just got serious when california passed this the gig worker bill 
and companies stopped hiring freelancers because of that we will continue this conversation next week too you can listen to this podcast when we met on spotify google podcast apple podcast hub hopper gana anchor or any other podcast app around the world new episodes release every friday and please 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 don't hesitate to dm us on instagram uh, we are at the rate platform for artists or don't hesitate to share this podcast with your friends or someone you know who is a freelancer get them into the conversation and we will build this creative economy ourselves i'm i'm not kidding we don't need any startup india program we'll start the fifth industrial revolution ourselves by boosting the creative economy i don't have a plan yet but uh, let's co create that plan thank you so much for listening to our podcast this show is produced by platform for artists and is supported by each and every community member of pfa take care and stay safe you all the lockdown might be lifted but the virus is still out there